Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. In the last episode, we landed on the moon. We took some small steps, some giant leaps, we set up the barren national flag, and we shot some golf balls. You know, moon stuff. And we also got ourselves a new party member, Fusoya, a Lunarian, native of the moon. He told us a lot of interesting things about the game's plot, including the fact that Cecil himself is actually part Lunarian on his father's side. His dad, Kluya, had traveled to the planet, provi you know, provided the world with the Devil Road and uh, the legend of the, the Lunar Whale slash Magical Ship, the Magical Lunar Whale Ship, whatever you want to call it. And uh, also gave us the technology to build airships, eventually. Lots of interesting things, and we also learned that Golbez himself is actually being controlled by another Lunarian, a man known as Zemus. Sealed in the moon's core by the power of the crystals from the Lunarian's world. And he is mind controlling Golbez and manipulating everything behind the scenes. He is the puppet master, the ultimate evil of the game. And he and Golbez are planning to use the Tower of Babel and the crystals of the Earth to summon the Giant of Babel, a giant machine that is supposed to destroy the world so that the Lunarians can inhabit it or something. I don't know. At this point, Zemus is kind of going crazy. You know, he didn't get his way, and now he's angry at everything. Anyway, we should be going to the planet to uh, stop the giant of Babel from being summoned, but I think we've got a little bit of time for some side quests. So we have this cave down here. And I'm probably going to get into a random battle on the way, but once we get into it... Crap. But anyway, as I was saying, we got this cave down here. Let's go check it out. The Cave of the Phantom God. Yeah, I remember reading about that in one of the books over in the Phantom World, in that library. So yeah, we've got the Phantom God. Rydia can acquire another summon in this cave. It's a pretty short dungeon, but it's got enemies from the final dungeon in it as random encounters. And some hidden boss battles along the way. So let's get some treasure while we're here as well. We got some good gear to pick up. We got the Genji Gauntlet. We are going to give that to Edge. It's a gauntlet, but Edge can equip it. So we're going to put the rune ring away for him. Look at that. His magic defense went down, but Edge is in the front lines. And, you know, he takes a lot of damage when he gets hit by physical attacks. So I'm willing to make that sacrifice. And Fusoya can actually equip that rune ring. So that'll come in handy. You know, the defense goes down just a tiny bit, but it boosts his white and mag black magic power. So... It's a fair trade-off, I'd say. But let's move on. And we have our first battles against the Demon Soldier. Okay, I'm going to, uh... Be Normally, if I were fighting more than one of these, I would do a different strategy. I would. I have the Ogre Killer and the Fairy Claw in my inventory. They're, it's considered a giant-type enemy. So I would, uh... Equip those on Cecil and Edge. But it's also susceptible to the tornado spell. Once Fusoya finishes uh, casting that, I'll have one character attack him after his HP has been reduced to single digits. And he also counter counterattacks magic spells of a beam attack. These guys can be pretty brutal. They've got like over 200,000 HP, or 20,000 HP, sorry. I was thinking of a different enemy there. But yeah, all right. Yeah, they usually come in pairs. So, you know, Tornado is a single targeting spell, so you'd want to cast it like on the one in the back row and have Cecil and Edge using the Fairy Claw and the Ogre Axe, or Ogre Killer, I mean, to uh, better uh, fight them. We have a Genji Shield. I'm actually going to just hang on to that for now because the Aegis Shield is a lot better. And it also prevents uh, the break status, actually. Cecil can't be petrified while he has the Aegis Shield equipped. It's something I neglected to mention earlier. So let's continue on. We're going to be utilizing some status ailments in some of these other encounters we'll be finding. I'm actually surprised I'm not seeing more enemies. Of course, now that I said that, we're going to get a random encounter any second now. And no? Alright, Genji Armor. That I'm going to equip on Edge as well. His attack power is going to go down because I'm going to remove the black belt, but it's going to boost his defense quite a bit, and his magic defense as well. It'll be, it's worth it. It's worth the exchange. 
You know, Edge isn't really the best physical attacker anyway. Do not take that narrow walkway yet until after we get this treasure. And we have a silver dragon. These enemies can be minied. And they're uh, pretty powerful. And even though it looks like they're flying, it look they they are uh, on the ground, but I don't have a quake spell with Rydia. So I'm going to uh, summon Leviathan. Fusoya, let's see, what should you do? Uh, cast a quake spell, Fusoya. And Rosa, when your turn comes around, we need a cure three. I'm just gonna heal. It's... These guys aren't that bad. Look at that, it's already down. We got some good money out of that. It's a pity there aren't that many things left to buy in the game because we're getting plenty of gill. But all right, Rosa, time for some healing. Yeah, Cecil really needs that. Edge could use it, and you could use it yourself, Rosa. Yeah, we're doing good now. So we have over here, we have the Genji Helmet. Once again, we're going to equip that on Edge. So he'll be doing pretty well for himself on defense now. Yeah, it's a nice boost. I think that might have lowered his attack power again. But okay, on this little narrow walkway, I'm going to top off on the healing. I'm going to actually have Cecil do the healing this time, just to spare some of Rosa's MP. Because on three different spaces in this dungeon, we have uh, a little, little mini boss battles. And here's one of them, the Behemoth. Okay, I'm going to have a very special uh, strategy for these guys. Behemoths are really, really slow. And I'm actually going to pause it for a second to explain this. I got this. I've got to give credit to HC Bailey for this one because I would not be using this strategy otherwise. You want to cast Berserk on Cecil and have everyone else defend except Rosa who will be doing healing because the Behemoth... He's very slow, he doesn't do norm many attacks on his own, but he counterattacks everything. And depending on what you do, if you use Fusoya or Rosa to cast Holy on it, or Meteo, it will counterattack with Maelstrom, which is basically Tornado on everybody with a really high hit percentage. So everybody will be down to single digits if you do something like that. So do not. But okay, I'm gonna have uh, Fusoya cast Berserk on Cecil, he has the highest attack power. And I'll just have, uh, basically just let Cis Cecil go to town on him. And I will have Rosa heal pretty much. Okay, well that wasn't so bad. But I'll just have Rosa stand by until I need to do some healing. Okay, yeah, see there. So yeah, Fuso, yeah, won't, won't survive another attack. Everyone else can defend. Yeah, defend yourself, Rydia. Ow. I guess that wasn't so bad. I'm going to have Fusoya use his Spirit Wave, actually. That's basically a regen that's active until I believe he takes a hit from uh, the enemy. Alright, gotta heal up Rydia. So basically now it's just a game of patience here. Just let Cecil go to town on the enemy. Yeah, the regen effect will gradually increase in power as the battle progresses, as long as Fusoya doesn't take a hit. Either that or its, like, recovery rate will increase, something like that. It'll, like, start recovering faster, and Rosa needs to pick up the pace a little bit. Either that or I need to. I'll have to do a group cast next time. I guess I could have done Cure 2. Uh-oh, don't hit Fusoya. Okay, it's dead. All right, we defeated the Behemoth. There are two more of those in this dungeon, and we'll get to those. I'll tell you where they are when we get to them. I'll probably cut those battles out, though, because it'll basically be the same thing. Oops, why did I pick red? Edge. All right, but yeah, heal up Fusoya there. Yeah, he's about as fragile as Tella, just at a higher level. And has about twice as much MP. Ooh, we got a light curtain from that. All right, that's awesome. That's an awesome drop. We're gonna need those in this dungeon at the end. And I also found out that the silver dragons, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. The silver dragons uh, counterattack uh, the Leviathan summon with a whirlwind attack, which 
it just does like a group it's just a group attack that that does uh some uh just regular damage okay we got a a skull dragon we want to get rid of these guys as quickly as quickly as we can because they have some brutal uh, a, gr a brutal spell that they can use against us I'll just have Rosa defend why why is Cecil all of a sudden so slow he's probably gonna counterattack this not quite max damage but ouch that kind of hurt but he's susceptible to holy I believe and crap no he's not susceptible to crap he's just there we go Yay, last minute regeneration. Rosa leveled up, and so did Cecil. That's good. I'm hoping to gain some good levels in this place, because we're going to need it. Alrighty, let's do some healing. I guess there isn't a specific antidote spell in this game. I'll just use one of my items. For some reason, I started thinking we had a antidote spell, which would be a waste of a slot because poison isn't that common. Yeah, we still got some antidotes. Really didn't want to use Esuna. But okay, hopefully now we don't get into any more battles on that level. And we have a new enemy, the Dark Wizard. You can uh, piggy them, which is what I want Riddy to do, actually. And I guess, uh, crap. Oh, ouch. Okay, uh, for so yeah, I wasn't going to, I was going to have you do something else, but. But, uh, anyway, uh, not yeah, sure, physical, crap, I should have just healed. I shouldn't have physical attacked with Rosa there. Come on, hurry up, guys. I want that dark wizard turned into a pig. Alright, thank you, Rydia. There we go, now it can't cast its spells. It knows the tornado spell. That's one reason you want to get rid of that as quickly as you can. Alright, fire three on the skull dragon, and ouch. I think I might have to go all out with pure four here. Yeah, that's better. All right, let's see how Odin does. Maybe we can one-hit kill these guys. And everybody's getting poisoned. Yeah, the Skull Dragon should be dead, yeah. All right. Let's see if Odin will finish off the, our little pig over there. Xantasukin! Yep, instant kill. Okay, for a second I thought I was going to regenerate like undead monsters in Final Fantasy VI, but nope. Okay. Well, I guess I can use some of my antidotes. I'm starting to feel... Where is it? They're up here. I'm starting to feel like I should have bought some more. I was not expecting to actually need them. I mean, worst comes to worst, I can do some, uh... Use a Esuna. Actually, there's nothing over on there. And that was the second behemoth. Sorry I didn't, I didn't give you guys any heads up on that one. I kind of forgot. I thought it was a couple spaces further down. But anyway, uh, actually I want Rosa to do the healing. Yeah, my levels are pretty low, I guess, for the moon. But we're getting by just fine. I don't have the high-end spells, though. All right, Rydia really, finally learned Bolt 3 at last. All right. The piggy spell seemed like it was far more effective when I used it with the uh, Apparition Rod. But all right. Uh, all right, in this little stretch here, I believe one or two more steps will have us with the, uh, the third and final behemoth. Let me check my HP real quick. Yeah, it should be okay. Alright, thank you, HC Bailey. That strategy was very, very helpful in this case. Those behemoths usually give me a much harder time. But I do need to do some healing real quick, because Edge took a few heavy hits toward the end there. Even with the boost from the Genji equipment, his defense is still pretty low. 
Oh wow, Fusoya gained a level from that one. We have these guys here. What business do you have with him? Oh, he must be talking about the Phantom God. Eh, you're only half. Okay, they're probably, uh... In case you go to this place before you go to the home of the Lunarians and learn the truth about Cecil, this way they kind of, like, allude to it without just flat out giving it away so it ruins the story sequence. But anyway, up here we have the Phantom God. There was one more enemy in this dungeon that I was hoping to see, but it was like, they're like called Moon Goddesses or something. We'll see them in the final dungeon too, but you can actually have Edge steal some arrows, the Artemis arrows, that can be used to uh, do quadruple damage against dragon type enemies, which we'll be seeing a lot of in the final dungeon. So it's something to consider. If you see them, you can steal from them, you know, cast mini on them, make them tiny so that they can't do much physical damage to you. They're usually paired up with Dark Wizards. And you, in this game, in, at least in this version of Final Fantasy IV, Edge can actually steal the same item from the same enemy multiple times in the same battle. So that, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Just make one tiny, maybe use the hold spell to paralyze it too, if that helps. And just keep stealing until you've got more than enough arrows that you can work with. But anyway, before I deal with the Phantom God, I am going to uh, replenish some MP. There we go. That yeah, I'm gonna need that. Rose, I could use a pick-me-up. Yeah, I think I'll use some regular Eepers. They're around here somewhere. Here we go. Makes, you know, these things are in my inventory for a reason. I want to make sure I can uh, survive my battle with the uh, Phantom God because this battle can be brutal. All right, I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna top off him so he has MP. He doesn't have that much to work with in the first place. But yeah, these light curtains and moon curtains, they are essential. We will not be able to survive this battle otherwise, at least not at this level, I don't think. But okay, uh, is everyone... Oh crap, I gotta top off uh, Edge's HP while I'm at it. Don't wanna enter this boss battle like that. I won't be able to do any healing if I have reflect on everybody anyway, so... Alright, so let's get this going. So, you are the first to defeat Leviathan. However, it could have been done without the power of light. Only I can judge true light. I am judge, jury, and executioner. I am the god of the Phantom Beasts. Bahamut! And it's time for a boss battle against Bahamut. He's got a countdown. Crap. All right, go into your items. Uh, moon curtain on edge. Cecil, use a light curtain. You gotta move fast, gotta move fast. Rydia, you use a light curtain as well. Usoya, you... Uh, cast Reflect on yourself, and when Rosa's turn comes around, she'll do the same for herself. Where is it? Reflect, reflect, here it is. We gotta hurry up and do that. We've got a Reflect set up, all right. Got more than enough time. So let's just start unloading on him now. All right, summon Leviathan. So yeah, you're going to cast the flare spell. And here it comes. Mega flare! Ha ha ha, max damage onto himself. So everybody just unload with whatever spells or attacks you can do. Because the countdown is going to resume. You know, the only attack Bahamut does is the Mega Flare. He basically just counts down from five over and over again. And you just have to hope Reflect holds out long enough for you to make use of it. All right, another Flare spell. Luckily, that spell doesn't take very long to cast at all. Look at that. So we should be able to defeat him. I'm confident. I'm confident in our abilities to win this battle. Yeah, he's taking a sweet time counting down. If this were a more, if I were using the uh, 
If I had it set to active instead of wait, this would be a lot more hectic. But at my current levels, that, that might be suicidal even. <laughs> it would have been funny if that would have been the blow that finished the fight. Alright, we defeated Bahamut! Well done, Cecil. 7,000 experience points, alright. I sense a great power and spirit from within. Rydia, if my power is ever needed, you may call my name. And we have learned the Bahamut Summon, the ultimate summon in the game. This side quest was well worth it. That'll come in handy very, very soon. And he just says the same thing again. <laughs> Alright guys, we've got ourselves a new summon. We've gained some levels. We've basically explored every area of the moon that we're able to access at present. So I think that's enough for this episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. Next time, we I will meet you guys back at the Lunar Whale, Magical Ship, whatever you want to call it. And we will return to Earth and hopefully prevent the Giant of, of Babil from being, from being summoned by Golbez and Zemus. This has been Phoenix Down, and I will see you guys next time.